Hello everybody and welcome back here to the Asian Dota Championships. This is the semi-final. It is LGD SGTY going up against a Scythe. It is Scythe Gaming. Here we go with that one. Um, it is Singapore versus China to see who's going to go up against Malaysia, Nirvana, and why. They are the boys who are waiting to find out who they're going to be versing. We're going to find out. We've been through two matches already. One apiece so far. The third one, who will receive it? LGD took out the first one and won epic, epic freaking long game. Um, second one was a lot more convincing by, by uh, Scythe. There are bands and picks kind of went a little bit better for them and they just basically controlled the entire game. LGD this time around, we're going to see what they're going to do. Of course, while it's happening, we're going to bump it straight up in your screen right now. We are currently inside the game. Uh, LGD, they go back to being Sentinel side. Scythe, go over to the Cisco side. And uh, we will see how we go. Sentinel side have had all the luck tonight. Uh, it's literally just been, uh, yeah, one win rar after the next. So uh, let's see how we actually go. And we're going to take a little bit of a moment here. Um, these guys, you've got to remember, um, you, you've, you've actually got to remember that these guys have been playing for what would be now, well, we've actually been sitting here for four hours. Four hours actually trying to get this game actually started. We've played two games. And, um, hang on, whoops, just turn that off while you're actually still wanting to watch them. Um, yeah, basically we've played uh, two games, and uh, we'll actually have our third game, which is now. But it's also 4 a.m. in the morning in both the places where these guys actually live. So as far as time zones go, it's an absolute pain in the ass. Um, everyone's a little bit late. Um, where I'm actually at the moment, it's actually 6 a.m. So uh, yeah, good fun times all around. And uh, you should get a rocking chair. That would be awesome. It is a rocking chair. It leans back. <laughs> I have to actually with this camera angle too. By the way, guys, we do actually have a full HD box on the way. Unfortunately, the floods in Queensland made a lot of computer parts hard to get hold of. Uh, so building it, we need certain bits to actually get it up and running. So, yeah. All right, game lines here is actually set to 50 MS, but we see Pugna and Visage Band. Wow, that's not something different than normal. Um, yeah, so our two standard bands we've seen come out so far. Um, I'm going to eat through this time. Take a little bit longer. We'll see... Uh, well, who are we actually going to see? Are we going to see ES actually come up on uh, on our side side this time around? <laughs> we'll find out. No, we're not. Ooh. I mention it, and HYHY bans it. Banning their own hero that they love to bits. Then again, CH was actually playing uh, ES before, and CH was lagging a bit. That's why um, I, I think that's actually why LGD were having a lot of trouble last time. We just didn't actually see um, a lot of the great initiations, which that uh, ES makes from um, basically his fissures, his awesomeness, it's just like perfect positioning. Um, but he didn't actually get that positioning this time around, so maybe try something a little bit different, remove that ES, um, no one gets him this time around. This will also remove a lot of support heroes out of the field, so uh, Scythe might decide to actually pick up a couple of key support heroes in the first couple of picks and then go for basically um, their carry heroes after that one, basically leaving LGD pretty, pretty lame on a lot of picks, so uh, we'll see how they go. We've only got two more bands to wait, well, one more band to actually get through for each team, so two bands in total. Um, Visage and Doombringer, taken out by LGD. Uh, 830 has actually been the drafter for this one, too. Uh, being subbed in, instant drafter. Um, HYHY removing Weaver. Weaver being one of those heroes which he actually removed every single freaking time as well. Uh, so Pugna and Weaver are the two he wishes to remove. Swapped it up a little bit, ES has been taken out of this one. LGD, Visage and Doom were there. Two main ones as well, maybe they'll throw us something a little bit different for this. And uh, for all the people asking, am I getting tired? Actually, yeah, a little. You're hearing the voice start to croak a little bit. Because it's, it's great in about four hours time when I wake, well actually no, I can't wake up that late and I'll be late for work. Um, yeah, later on, I'll sound like Barry White, it's great. <laughs> I sound like a rustic Australian. It's good. Well, that was almost wrong. You say Pick OD. Um, Ancient Apparition is the last band coming out from LGD. Probably a wise choice is War Morphling. 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 Oh, Morphling will actually be our first pick here. This is going to be one epic, epic battle. Now, relive the last two games. No matter what happens whenever Scythe. When, when Scythe play, they play two main heroes. Morphling is going to be more than enough to be a main hero. Um, but they put him on Yamata and HYHY. Sharky sometimes got involved. He got involved with Brewman before, and he's a pusher. Um, then grabbed an Ingra, pushed push Billy once again. Um, but to actually grab that Morphling, if he gets farmed up, if he goes unchecked, 
tell GD can kiss their asses goodbye. If they can check him down, then they might be in good luck. And once again, Batrider being picked. Batrider picked a third time tonight, and every single time he's been picked, he's been dominated. Batrider's going to be careful too, because he is squishy when Morphling gets an ethereal blade. In fact, everybody's freaking squishy when Morphling gets an ethereal blade. Um, but as far as it goes, he can easily be shot down. Even if he does get like a hood up, Vanguard, which is the general first two items, which you probably expect for him, um, it's still not going to help. I wouldn't actually be surprised right now if we see an SFCM um, basically giving Scythe their main big carry heroes. And you'll see, you'll see uh, HYHY on SF. Yamantar would pick up the Morphling and then CM just running himself around with an aura going, hey, everybody throw everything. See the CM, but get a puck instead. Um, probably not a bad option. Invoker comes up as the last pick for A3O. Um, but do I should grab CM and puck? I'm actually interested to see who's going to play the puck right now. Because uh, I know HYHY -H 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 -Y as well as Yamatar. Oh, they've played him before. Um, but will it actually go to Sharky? That's going to be the other question for us. Um, probably for HYHY, he actually wanted to leave SF in the, in the pool um, just in case they can't pick him up. They removed Broodmother out, out of the lineup now just to make sure they can't get out pushed. Obviously, HYHY knows he's got a. Um, he doesn't really have a pushing lineup as such, even though he can do it later on in the game. But early on, Broodmother is great for pushing, so I want to remove her out, out of the lineup. Um, but I'm just wondering at the moment if he's actually holding SF up his sleeve, just in case later, just so they don't get a complete counter to him. Um, we still have to see a, um, well, if, if Scythe go off what we've seen before, we might see an Enigma as well as an SF, um, or we might see something like, well, I don't know, Lion. Yeah. Um, because they still need one good stunner. Like Morphling, he's got his stun up his sleeve. But, yeah. uh, CM has Frost Nova, so slow, big damage on that one after it got buffed a little bit. Um, Frost Comb. Puck also has, like, has a warning rift, so it's burst damage as well as uh, silence, so it is disabled. The ultimate, though, doesn't actually stun you unless you move outside of the Dream Coil. So not really great stunners as such. So if, if we did actually go with uh, less support heroes here, we still have Witch Doctor in the lineup too. Um, then you'd probably have to be looking, well, there goes Lion, HY, HY, actually banning him out, so removing all the heroes. I would be very, very surprised if they didn't pick up Witch Doctor now. Um, and actually, Windrunner being picked up, uh, being banned by 830, uh, but Witch Doctor should be HY, HY's pick right now. Um, but just to look at their lineup, it's like they have very, very little stun. It would force Morphling to get a Gwinsu, which you don't want to see on a, on a Morphling. Morphling doesn't need that in his stat pad. He needs to um, have that ethereal blade up as fast as he possibly can, and that Lincoln Sphere up, and uh, basically just GG Rickroll. Um, yeah, so we will see how they go. I'm going to see if I'm right too. I'm really looking forward to seeing if I'm right. Um, <laughs> Which Doctor should actually be HY, HY's pick? Because they still need that stun. They massively need that stun. In saying that, they also need something can go up, up against Invoker. Like at the moment, you've got Morphling, who will more than likely for Scourge, solo the top. Um, he will get support, possibly from a neutraler, um, CM will definitely be up on the top there going for pulls um, as well as uh, harassment up there on the top to make sure that our LGD stay back um, but they're still going to build up the rest there they need, they need a couple of laners and they need one more support here one, one, one laner, one support 8-3-A, you look at his lineup and you got Batrider, Invoker, VS you already know Invoker is solo mid who's going to go up against Invoker? that's going to go through HY's mind right now and if he picks it now, he'll pick it next um, Look at the rest of the lineup. Batrider vs. Batrider more than likely will just get support on one of the lanes. Maybe expect bottom. VS go actually with him or actually go on the roam. I'd prefer to actually see and keep pressure on Scythe, especially early on in the game. Scythe likes to move around. And whoever just yelled out Spirit Breaker in the chat is a complete twit. <laughs> There's no way they're going to pick up SP. Now that I've said that, however, um, it could actually end up something completely different. A man with three buttocks. The chair's not comfortable. SF, there we go. Uh, so SF does come up for HYHY, so he is going to pick it up, uh, just in case 830 thought it. And uh, remake after draft is a call from Amazing, uh, with uh, CH dropping out. I'm guessing he's having net, net troubles again. Uh, yay. Um, so yeah, we, we will remake after the draft. 830. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Line up at the moment, I'm not even sure how he's going to play this. It will all be decided on a couple of, on the next heroes. YYF is actually leaving the game as well. <laughs> so all the LGD boys are actually bailing for the moment. Got to get the hentai break in before the third match. So uh, we will actually... Uh, Scythe, what are you going to do? 
LGD, what are you going to do? Apart from eating into your extra time, uh, A3O saved up all his extra time for now, so we could have a long wet in the hands, boys and girls. Um, but Invoker, Batrider, VS. A3O did remove Visage, Doombringer, a Ancient Apparition, Tidehunter as well as Windrunner. HY took out Pugna, ES, Weaver, Broodmother as well as Lion. Picking up Morphling. Oh my god, shotgun. Um, even with the new nerf, it's still a freaking shotgun. Maybe a sawn off shotgun, but still a shotgun nonetheless. Um, CM, Puck, as well as SF. And A3O picks up Clockwork Goblin. Interesting hero. Especially considering the Cogs are not going to be that great. Unless he's going to try and catch SF off, but SF is going to pop the ulti off. Then again, the mini stun on the back of the Clockwork Goblin will actually help a hell of a lot. But as far as catching Puck, and as far as catching Morphling out, it's impossible. Morphling has his wave. Um, you have Puck with his illusionary orb to get himself back out again. And we do actually see a neutral. Shen actually comes up. So as far as the le these lanes should go, we should see SF solo mid, Puck solo bottom. We'll have Shen neutraling up the top, CM and Morphling harassing in the lane. Morphling will babysat, CM will be harassing him back and also helping Shen with the pulls. And then Shen comes in at the right time to get those ganks off. So LGD's lineup. You go look at how they're going to go. Clockwork Goblin, great for solo. More than likely, he'll be put up on the top lane um, to actually go as their solo and use the Rockers to try and stay in the mix. The downside on that, though, is the fact that Clockwork Goblin cannot stop the hitting of Morphling. He gets free farm. Worst possible scenario that LGD has is Morphling getting free farm. The SF in the middle against Invoker, they can go at a hearts content. It becomes a CS battle and a harassment battle. They can have a great old time there, and that comes down to play a skill. But as far as like the tri-lane combination that you actually currently see from Scythe, um, yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> wow, LGD just bought a new bot. I love it. <laughs> this could be interesting. Um... Yeah, so as he's still going through, LGD need one more hero for this. We might have a short delay after this point. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. LGD have VS, Batrider, Invoker, Clockwork Goblin. Batrider, VS, one lane. Clockwork Goblin, one lane. Invoker, mid. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Clockwork Goblin's going to be going up solo against Puck. Puck's going to enjoy that to his heart's content as well. Unless they switch the tri lanes around. But more than likely, they're probably going to tri lane on tri lane. Unless they want to shut down that puck on the bottom line, which wouldn't be bad. Um, everyone's leaving, and Furion is our last pick. So uh, they said the last words of uh, join the bot, and Furion will be the last one to actually come out for the lineup. So uh, we're going to see, uh, well, will we see Milk Star? Or will we see actually uh, even better than him? Who knows? It's in the hands of LGD, so anything is possible. 8 3 has just joined the lineup as well. So uh, just quitting out of the game. One new bot is actually already in here, all ready to go. Let's see what our ping's like for this one. Happy Roach, get yourself out of here. I even know you, you've traced me. <laughs> oh, sad. But he didn't trace me, he's actually the owner of this one. So he's actually joined it in. Ah. Oh. Thank you very much, Deroy. So hopefully this game will be completely lag-free and everything is going to be absolutely perfect. We'll have to check the pings. And every single ping we have, I'm the highest. 93 is the highest ping we currently have out of CH. who was pinging about 300 before. So the host boss being bought. And um, wow, this, this is going to be an awesome game. Thank you. Thank you very, very much to LGD for actually buying this host bot. It would have been great the first match. But still, um, massive ping at 107. That's it the highest you get, and we're going to tunnel him. So we're looking pretty good. 2008 CN comes in. <laughs> oh, it's great for some of the names that actually appear in this game. Um, but wow, this should be a really, really awesome game with a, with a new host spot. Actually, hang on, you think I failed LGD's lanes? No, I think the only time I think I'm on a foul LG's, LG's lane is if they switch it around and go from the bottom to the top and put the tri lane for theirs on the bottom and then the solo up on top. We'll find out. We will find out. It's going to be that great old time. Anyway, we have the last pings coming out. Everyone's below 100 bar me, and that's because I'm streaming this stream for you guys out there. Thank you very much for listening in, by the way. Always great to have your company.
So uh, check game just come out and uh, let's get this party started. G -G -G -G, let's go. LG says ready and we're good to go. Auto start does go through. And uh, what you want to see is this loading screen right now. Prepare yourself for ADC. It is match three. Scythe going up against LGD SGTY on a new host spot too. So uh, let's see how we go. And uh, I'm all about loud digital. Let's not miss the first blood this time. <laughs> miss it the first two times of tonight. That's appearing in the lights like, oh, watching this. Oh, crap. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this time tonight, we're not going to have that. Third match, we will get it. <laughs> so let's see how China also actually used Furion. Like, we've seen a couple of things. Like, we've seen, like, I'm, I'm going to refer to Melga a hell of a lot because I really love his Furion play. Um, but to actually, like, take the courier all the way around, then TP in, then kill the courier, then go back again, and then go back through, it's like, oh. Um, let's see how they go. Also, LGD is having a couple of issues with their war keys right now. Um, and who the hell actually just said Troll, Spirit Breaker, PA, Void, and SA, any lineup? <laughs> That's terrible lineup. Actually, no, she's not that bad. Yeah, she, yeah, troll and spirit break, that should be. Yeah. Never mind. That's a terrible lineup. Terrible lineup. <laughs> got, got stuff I the good in that. Uh, all right, so. Um, Schmall Porsche. Schmall Porsche. That's why we have this up right now. Um, it shouldn't be long before the uh, game actually starts with walkies. Always a little bit troublesome, but um, not that hard to actually fix up, especially when you're on your own computer. Most of these guys, though, will be probably playing at their land, so, uh, yeah. Jez Snow saying, watch the minimap, watch the minimap. Hang on, I, 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 want, I want to hear from the IRC. What do you think the lanes are? I just saw CZ Noob say that Batrider is going to go mid. It's quite possible, actually. Like, Batrider solo mid is actually very, very possible. So, uh, faster, we ready. <laughs> Scythe want to go. Scythe want to move on. They want to go forward and face Nevada MY. That will be one hell of a match. Singapore versus Malaysia again. And I uh, have Scythe going up against Nevada MY. Or will LGD actually move themselves through? That will be the bigger question. Aludi's already saying the picks are they're already being outpicked. I've got to say that Scythe's lineup is very, very standard. Um, as, as far as their lineup goes, everything is... You, you've seen most of it before. The, what's really going to come down to is the player's skill and how it's actually going to be executed. If they can do that, then technically this game should be theirs just going off ping, off, off pings, off, um, off picks. Wow, what time of the morning is it? Great. All right, so um, everyone's everyone's pinging nicely. Just got to wait for the wall keys to be fixed up. Nice host spot. Mm. By the way, for all those people who just found me on Garena, mainly QWERTY and Facade, kiss my ass. <laughs> kiss my ass. <laughs> They're just spamming me up. If you're if you're actually here on the CGTV chat, we would remove you. By the way, thank you very much to everyone who's actually come to the CGTV site. So that's cybergamertv.com. Um, if you go forward slash TV after that one, you should get the live stream page as well. Um, but uh, basically, we hit a new record for CGTV. Over 3,000 people actually on the page. Uh, so that is our new record. Obviously, it's only a very, very new page, so the record's only just been set. Uh, so yeah, we'll see if anything else can go in, in front of it. Maybe the next ADC match, or maybe the Farm for Fame 3.1 final coming up later this week. Who actually knows? We will find out as um, a bit of lag is invokers, uh, resources are loaded onto the map. And uh, let's see how we go. Amazing. Oh, I think it's been called. Oh, it has. I, I'm going to look at Scourge first. I got the lanes wrong. I got the lanes completely wrong. Puck will be going towards top lane. So Koi soloing that one. And uh, SF will be going solo in the middle lane. Uh, as far as our bottom lane goes, it will be Yamata, Roy, and Sharky. Yamata playing as our Morphling. Roy playing as our Shen. Sharky playing as our Crystal Maiden, and that'll be your try lane for the bottom lane. So they're going to set up a camp inside the little neutrals and really put that pressure on once again. And um, really, that is uh, exactly what Scythe has been doing the last two games. They've literally just said, you know what? Last game, the one they won too, they said, we're going to shut down their neutrals and keep the pressure on. And you can actually see here that uh, HYHY actually hasn't left the base yet or bought any items. Um, 
And the Clockwork Goblin Rocket is keeping very, very close eyes on him uh, to see where he's actually going. So he's now bought up items, now moved himself out, and the Rocket will actually see him now move himself out. So a very, very late push out there by SF. Shen moving himself around inside the Sentinel Neutrals. Haven't, seen, haven't heard the Falcon go off yet because it's uh, another 10 seconds before it sounds and then 10 seconds after that, quick wave spawns. Clockwork Goblin will be soloing up the top. So uh, I was at least right about the Puck versus uh, Clockwork Goblin going up. Or am I ZMSJ going up as the Furion? Uh, CH is going to join him as a, as a Ventral Spirit. Um, amazing. Bat Rider Solar Mid. And uh, Invoker, 830 down the very, very bottom. So maybe a tri lane is actually going to be the top lane. V is having a bit of a look around. Invoker is going to get his ass torn a new one now on that bottom lane unless he gets support. Luckily, ZMSJ, though, that's literally his ability. He can teleport himself all the way around the map right now. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very easy for him to go. Anywhere they want to. Look at LGD as well. Just planning the wars down and losing the wars instantly. Scythe are removing their map control from the get-go. And because the second they see Shed, they're like, yep, know exactly what he's doing. How are they going to respond to this, though? Morphling's on that bottom lane. Yamatai going up against 8-3-0. So uh, Invoker's going to have his work cut out for him, knowing he's going to hug that tower a hell of a lot. Uh, Yamatai, great for last hits. Already got one, as well as a deny. So, uh, well, can't get that one. There, yeah, you got that one. Um, so CM will now come and give a bit of a uh, harassment, look for the Nova to come and just harass that Invoker back. Can't let him actually free farm. Fearing will actually head down towards that bottom lane, while Shen is actually farming close in on the, um, on the, on the mid lane. That's actually a very good move at the moment, because he can actually pick up that Wilkin. If he wants to, he can harass off that middle lane. Um, and uh, Batrider and VS being very, very aggressive during HY, HY. And Amazing can be very, very careful. He's going to have a cre full creep wave right here. HY, HY can make the most of this one. Or will he? No, he's going to fall himself back. But uh, Amazing will take that tower um, a little bit on the way back. It will actually hit him. No, it won't. Uh, Wilkin actually coming up. Shen actually pushed in towards that middle lane. Um, or at least it's in his Wilkin. And um, we will actually have the Batrider uh, go a little bit further up there. Bottom lane, Fury and hiding inside the trees. Fair enough, because he can create his own right now. It's probably quite easy to hide inside the trees. CM moving herself back a little bit. Morphling, Yamatar, trying to stay a little bit closer as well. Invoke with that support, is able to farm up a little bit more. Shen comes in, just attacking his own creep so he doesn't give away any extra gold. Trying to bring it down. Puck up here on the top lane. How's Koi been going? Koi, our legendary ES. YYF running himself down. Boots are early on as well. Healing Slav. If you don't remember why, it's actually a good idea to go Boots with the Clockwork Goblin. Check out a couple of casts ago. Uh, in fact, I think it was... Um, whew, it, was it was definitely ADC. Um, and uh, Slash can actually explain it. But you can, you can try and troll out the YouTube uh, channel for that one. Oh, Puck! He's actually losing all over the top here and wants to actually push YYF very, very far back here. Koi happy to be aggressive. We'll force the healing slav, and there's goes Clockwork Goblins, all of his consumables right now. Invoker. Still actually haven't seen any, um, any first blood come out. Waiting for it. Clockwork Goblin back up to full health. Rocket goes off. Illusory Orb over the top once again. Will the Ethereal jaunt it? Yes, he does. Wants to keep the pressure on. Why way off my even go for this one right now, but VS coming in. In comes a TP. This will be the first blood from the top lane. Koi, he has no he has no orb to get himself out now. Caught in the trees, face shifting himself, but it's not enough. There's the first blood. CH walks away with the last hit. So it does go to the Vengeful Spirit. And uh, that is it. So our Fury and TP down that bottom lane. You've got to be careful. He can move at a moment's notice. Save game coming out. Shen also moving down towards that bottom lane, so be very, very careful of uh, the gank, which will definitely shoot. So coming in from the uh, from the lower side, LGD just uh, getting pushed back to A three O. It's just a little bit of harassment, making sure Yamatar can still free farm. Yamatar, of course, can jump in at a moment's notice too with that uh, massive waveform, which he does actually have. We'll check the CS scores in just a moment as well. Shen just makes sure to pull up after Crete Wave. Uh, Scythe already have a ward there too, just watching any movement coming in from that side. Really, really focusing on, uh, on map control. SF getting napalmed a little bit. Does pop the level 4. Something about half a level behind Batrider at the moment. Something one game can change, there's the regen rune on the bottom. Not picked up, so we won't have a new rune. So a uh, two-minute rune not picked up by anybody. 
Clockwork Goblin now running a bottle around. He's going to want to pick up that regen rune, especially with that harassment he's got on top. But he's come down towards that bottom lane, while Koi is actually being left to free farm that top lane. Even though he's, uh, he was the first one to actually die, uh, letting a puck free farm and get himself up to level 6 nice and fast is not something you actually want to see. Um, unless the puck is on the team you were cheering for, then at which point is it something you definitely want to see. Oh, Yamatas. <laughs> Thanks to all the boys who actually said kudos for actually for seeing the first blood. That's right. Oh, yeah, got it. Um, one to nil is currently where we are sitting. And uh, Napalm, HYHY, -H -Y, just pushing. Pushing Amazing back. By the way, Amazing is the only player here tonight playing under an alias. Um, it is Sean. Sean. C-H-A-U-N, if you want to spell it. Um, if you want to pronounce it, then don't listen to how I pronounce it. So people who want to learn English by, by listening to uh, English Dota Shoutcast. Um, you're going to learn some really, really screwed up English if you listen to mine. <laughs> it's Australian English. Australian English. Invoker and Fury have a little bit more fun on there on the bottom lane. So uh, Shen rejoining it towards that mid lane. Not really actually stamping his authority as I thought he would have in that set on neutral. <laughs> What's happening up there on the top? Someone's moving themselves around. VS harassing off a little bit more. VS, I think, have been forced to go up, the, up towards that top lane. Clockwork Goblin was just way too close to being killed. And if Puck actually drops that ulti too, then things are not going to work nicely for him. Fury and harassing Morphling back on the bottom lane as well. CM wants to come down. More pings going up there on the top lane, just waiting for that uh, engagement to go off. Illusory Orb over the top just wipes out the rest of the Crete wave. A little bit of extra farm for our, for our puck. VS getting caught out by Shen right now. No Illusionary Orb will come up, but there will be a puck, a puck ulti. We'll hold CS in place for more than long enough to actually get this kill. And if he needs to, one Illusionary Orb will do it. Throws down one hit, and Fury actually TPs in. Illusionary Orb actually goes over the top and gets himself out of trouble. Good save for that one. And uh, Clockwork Goblin trying to jump on the back of it and uh, with the Cogs holding Puck in place. But as I said early on before we actually even started this game, it's very, very hard to kill a Puck. Unless he pops that Illusionary Orb off very, very early, you're not going to get the kill on him. He's just going to fly himself right over the top and uh, you're not going to be able to stop him. So, uh, yeah, as far as that went, not exactly the way that, um, the way that, uh, that uh, LGD planned that all in going, but it is one apiece now. And, uh, well... Top lane, Fury's now up there. Let's check out the CS scores for just a moment. Blast actually coming out from Shen from the side, so he's wanting to actually go back up towards that top lane. So as far as CS scores go, Morphling in the bottom. Oh my god. 30 for 10 on Morphling, 25 for 13 on uh, Koi. HYHY, -HY, 25 for 11. Check out the LGD boys, 21 for 8 on the back of Amazing as the Batrider. 14 for 5 on Clockwork Goblin, 12 for 3 on 830. Not what they wanted to see. And we actually have a bit of a safe game here. I'm going to check out the ping at the moment. And everyone's actually pinging beautifully. Um, this is definitely playable. And the fact we actually have a Chinese versus Singapore game and everybody's ping is below 100, everything is beautiful. So um, I think we might have a small spike which uh, has uh, upset the players a little bit. Keep it uh, up on the screen while we're actually going. The call to go. Um, just making sure they're not going to say saving. Yeah. Uh, but that's really like, as far as like Corey goes, he has died one time. He's got one kill back though, so it balances out. He uh, did actually got two. He got. It did actually got two hundred and ten gold. He has actually received for the kill. Um, <laughs> snap on resume. Um, but as far as what he got, he actually made money. It's a, it's, a, it's a good investment, getting a kill and actually dying at the same time. It actually works out for you. You actually make a hell of a lot more money, especially if you keep on buying up. Buying up. Uh, so yeah, at, uh, at the moment, VS is the only one to actually die and the only one to get a kill. Koi and VS, the only two people to actually be in, have uh, anything on their um, board for kills. Alright, uh, so there's a... Uh, a pretty big spike actually coming out, I'm not quite sure what it is. So I might just give the bot a couple of seconds and hope it uh, all starts to smooth, smooth itself out. Everyone's still pinging okay, so as far as the pings go, it's actually, it's actually great. <laughs> yeah, so it was actually Star that actually bought, bought it for him. The man who loves to play with the LGDAU boys. 
<laughs> so three, two, one. We're gonna start this one. Oh, hang on. We got weights coming out. So there's our resume. Uh, asking us to actually resume, so they have their hands on the keys, and uh, we should be good to go. Hopefully, the lag has actually stopped for everybody, and um, should be good. Should be good. That invoker though, Yamata, so much farm for seven minutes. Already with that ring of health, Crow will be working overtime. We'll hopefully uh, fly out that uh, the rest of the perseverance. Um, so the mana ring, whatever it is, that thing. Ring of mana, mana ring, something like that. Um, memories escaping me at this time of the morning. Uh, so yeah, Yamata going to get very, very farmed up right now, and that is something which they really don't need. Scardi up by 15 is, um, actually even at this rate, yeah, 15 is when you'll actually have Scardi up. SF as well, so easy to free farm that middle lane. Batrider just can't get close enough, trying to fire off the bottle charger so he can keep that harassment going, using um, well, what is now an illusion rune inside his bottle. So uh, we'll be able to help him out. Looks like uh, a gank is uh, setting up here in the bottom lane with uh, VS and uh, Furion hanging around. Furion uh, going to go for the pull, try and slow down this creep wave, get a little bit more space to this Invoker so we can actually farm up. Level 6 Invoker um, is actually out-leveling Morphling at the moment, uh, which is actually quite impressive. Um, even though the uh, last hits aren't going through, um, he's actually currently out-leveling Morphling. And it's not because the creep waves are still waiting to die, it's just the fact that he's out-leveling it. So uh, Yamata now just moving himself in, might actually complete up a lag. Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> this is definitely not good. Um, big, big spike that came out. Uh, all the pings are absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, there's just a little bit of lag coming out. So what, one, one one of pieces is where we're currently sitting. So the guys are still playing on. Um, they're not stopping for the moment, so uh, we should be okay. Let's invoke up to level 7, big wave, uh, for the Sentinel actually help push out that bottom lane. Uh, in towards the middle, looks like a lasso is currently wrapped around HY, HY's neck, amazing wants to kill, we'll get the kill as well. Clockwork Goblin also runs up a CM, holes inside the cogs, we'll take a little bit of damage from this one, uh, while amazing actually t um, basically flames himself out of that mid lane, but uh, that is two kills for that mid lane. Bottom lane also, oh, I saw a little bit of a ping going off. But uh, it is nothing really harassing it off. Shem wants to come in towards the mid lane to actually help that one out. Top lane as well. Morphling is actually switched now. Uh, up towards the top lane, so uh, easy enough to actually help him farm up that tower and try and push that tower down. So maybe they're just not happy enough with, uh, with Morphling's farm or just want to keep that, keep that switch happening, which they do like to do all the time. Between Yamata as, as well as um, HYHY. But HYHY is currently in the mid and he's quite happy, happy in the mid. Couple of raises. Gets him a little bit of farm. Clockwork Goblin also switches now. Or does he? No. Rockets up on the top. So we're uh, quite happy to go up against Yamata. Joining him will be SF with a haste rune. Oh, Clockwork. Oh, Clockwork. Oh, clockwork. Is he going to... No, he's not. <laughs> SF just comes up towards the top. They might try and just push this tower down. Two big heroes. And we, we've seen this a lot from Scythe. They, they bring in their two big farmed heroes to push down the towers just to secure it and just to actually scare the living crap out of the hero which is up the top. Living crap is just a bonus. Um, if you also saw living crap run very, very fast, that's got to be a demon. Mid lane now being pushed off CM once again, caught, caught in the trees. And uh, that is an easy kill. Puck actually dropping down the ulti, holding them in place right now. Amazing still taking the tower, but the Firefly will allow him to escape. Morphling! Oh, Yamata! Gets one, gets two, with a beautiful wave over the top. Oh, he could not have planned that any better. That Puck ulti from Koi. If there's not an ES Fissure holding in place, it's a Puck ulti, stunning and lining him up. The only thing he missed then was Batrider. If he got Batrider, that would have just been the, um, the complete, like, beat knees and spans of Alakazam. And they might even, yes they do, amazing goes down, and Koi is rewarded for his hard work and gets that kill. We should see the tier 1 tower die here in the middle lane, but that is a massive, massive blunder for LGD. But the great initiation, now TP going down towards the bottom lane uh, with uh, Fury as well as Invoker trying to push this one out. They will not be able to stay on top of Shadow Fiend, but this tier 1 tower will die in the middle lane. Yamatar as well gets the last hit on the back of that one 
It is Farm Central. So four apiece. It's all leveled back up again. LGD, a mistake. A mistake. Well, even they're not really a mistake by theirs. It was great of the initiation for them, but uh, it was just great responsiveness uh, from Scythe to actually come through and go, you know what? We can make the most of this one. Yamata TP at the perfect time came from the top in towards the mid. Now bottom lane harassment coming off. Uh, they want to get this SF back. It was on a very, very fast retreat as well as CM uh, with a big TP. That's uh, four heroes actually down that bottom lane right now. While that's happening, Morphling free farming top. We have... Um, oh, is there anything bought? The courier is flying back right now. Very, very slow courier. But he has completed his perseverance. Um, so he is on his way. He needs that ultimate orb with that. But those kills are, I thought he would get a little bit more gold. Obviously, only very early levels, so not mass amounts of gold that comes from that. Well, now we've got a, 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 um, a pressure about to be applied by Scythe in the bottom lane. Whoa, oh no, right on the top. Warring Rift, Ulti holding two in place, races over the top. Take about an 8 3 0. ZMSJ is now also under pressure. Code trees himself. Want to bring a couple of minions to try and help defend this lane. Um, but that's a double kill coming up for HYHY. So Yamata had the first deal, and now HYHY gets the second. And he actually picks up that double kill on that bottom lane. Yamata TP is out towards that middle lane as well. So uh, more farm while the Crete wave is there. He's going to make the most of it. More than likely, there should be an ultimate orb on top here. And actually, uh, have an ogre axe and a bottle uh, flying on down. So, um, where is Yamata keeping his money? Is he like hiding under a bed, digging a hole inside his own neutral like, yeah, I'll save it here. Shen might find it. He's basically exploring all those neutrals right now. That. <laughs> I love the guys in the IRC, in the, um, in the uh, CGTV chat. It's like, yeah, that is like freaking Imba Puck. ZGKM is just like, yeah, Imba Puck. It is true. He's like being perfect on his, like, that is two oldies now, which would be in the perfect place. Great time for initiation. Warring Rift. It's actually a very, very easy combination to do. VS swaps in. Well, now, Illusory Orbs over the top. Warring Rift's on the top. Shen will come for support. Batrider's going to come over the top as well. CM's there. Frost goes off. And VS will probably actually die while this is happening. Shen's being lassoed over the top. Clockwork Goblin coming in for a bit of support right now. Trying to get on the back. And um, Trees come out from Furion. Give it a little bit more of a wave. Puck over the top. Slows them down. Yamatars in the mix. Yamatars in the mix. Waves over the top. A3 brings down Koi on the retreat back out again. But Clockwork Goblin should be a second kill here for Yamata. He has enough for another wave, which should actually claim two right now. Trees go off, wave over the top, one goes down, and now Furion's got to be careful not to make it a triple kill here for Yamata. Moving in inside the trees. TP, he's going for it. One hit. Is there a stun? There's the stun. Frost over the top. One hit and leaves the hit. Last hit, triple kill, goes off to Yamata and Sharky playing great support with a frost over the top. Made sure it wasn't enough to actually kill him and Yamata walks away with the extra 235 gold he gets for killing. Six to nine. Six to nine. 14 minutes and 39 seconds into this game. LGD looking a little bit shaky right now and that awfully looking stronger and stronger with every moment that passes by. If I've said it once, I've said it twice, and I've said it a thousand times through so many freaking shower casts, it ain't funny. Do not let Morphling farm. That's a Preservirus and Ultimate Orb right now. And uh, with a little bit more farm, he would actually have that Lincoln Sphere completed in the space of, I'm going to say, two minutes. It's going to be a 17, 18 minute Lincolns. Once that's up, Ethereal Blade, probably about 25 at the rate he's going right now. Maybe a little bit later. He wants to go for that top tower. Waiting for it. Tower's low. Scourge does get the last hit on it though, so uh, not Morphling, but uh, at least it's not denied for him. So an extra 200 gold helps towards the kitty. If you got that tower, we would have seen the, that um, Lincoln Sphere up a hell of a lot faster. Morphle. Oh, Puck. Puck, I think that's the first illusionary orb where Coy says, you know what? I don't think that's going to reach. Um, ready to push out that top. But the tier 1 tower has gone down. Morphling is leading the charge. Ready to have a go. And uh, it looks like all the Scourge heroes are falling back right now. They don't want to be part of a big team fight. They might be forced to actually be part of a team fight. But while that's happening, Invoker Free farming the bottom lane, funnily enough, um, for the Sentinel side, which is not really going to help them much. Invoker, good. Morphling, one hit. One hits them down. 
Shenzhen is coming down. Didi on the back of the SF. In fact, all sides are holding hands. Um, <laughs> they're just having a tea party around that tier 2 tower right now. Centaur's on the front have taken every single bit of that damage. And Yamatar gets the last hit there. Furin tried to go for the, for the deny and now brought himself in way too close. He is currently silenced. Good wind uh, straight up the mid there. Manalik goes off to Tries to actually lasso. Does lasso. HY, HY back in again. Slight ping, uh, slight uh, spike while this is happening as well. This isn't cool. And the HY, HY is like, damn it, damn it. I could have got myself out of that one. VS swap goes through and really HY, HY was screwed during that one. CM actually running the opposite direction now. Trying to come back down to Furion, who's actually TP'd himself up a little bit further right now. Trying to catch up to the Shen. Um, could actually drop down. Rocket flies over the top, gets a little bit more vision. And uh, off to the side, we do actually have um, Furion having a look around, but catches the wrong direction. But uh, that's a couple down for the Scourge. Yeah, I spiked through that one too. So off we go again, 8 to 9, levels up a little bit closer. Just when you think it's over, gets up a little bit closer. The lag literally can't be explained as well. Both teams are copying it. Like you can actually see, even see it on my stream right now. Just the spike is coming through. Yeah, it's, 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 all, it's all fair and love and war as far as the lag goes. Everybody's getting all, it all leveled up at the moment. Shen Force back. Wow, Aura stack up a little bit more. He does look kind of cool like that, though. Invoker going for Style Man of the Month. SF back and towards mid. Ogre Axe is up. Still hasn't completed that BKB yet. That kill is not, that death is not going to help him. Yamata almost hits the 100 CS mark within 18 minutes. Almost. As far as the LGD guys go, in fact, if you actually add everything up here, bruh, HY, HY, and Yamata are far more than the entire LGD, LGD side. And then you're going to add the 54 and 15 on the back of Puck, who's got two kills. Has got two deaths, but five assists, and those assists have been so critical. 67 for 11, though, for the Invoker, 44 for 8 for Batrider. A little bit, a couple of other little things just like missing from this LGD lineup. Okay, a farm and the other heroes. Morphling Lincolns, well, there it is at 18. He's already had it one, ch one time fired off and still got 1,100 gold there, so that was definitely a 17 Lincoln. Now back in towards the middle clock where Goblin is keeping that rocket flying off down towards the bottom lane. Give a bit of a helping hand as well as keeping tabs on those heroes moving around the bottom. CM1 up the levels, so got up to level 4 too, so Brilliance Aura is up. SF will be very thankful for that. So will Morphling. The longer the battles go, the more mana regen they actually get, so the more damage they can actually pump out. As I say, that looks like we actually got a kill on the bottom lane with our uh, A3O. Managed to claim Koi's life here. That's why the blink dagger on the Batrider. No one was ready for it. I wasn't ready for it. As uh, they will push themselves out, blinking it down towards the bottom. CM actually getting stunned on this one. Fury and TPs himself down. And uh, CM will have to take it for the team. Sharky will die in that bottom. And uh, in fact, does so as well. So two down, 10 to 9. And uh, for the first time, we actually see LGD ahead on the kill count board here. Yeah, in, well, two matches really. Uh, it was uh, Scythe that uh, held the uh, ground for the uh, last battles all the time. Morphling Yamata! Wow, aggressive and a half. He wants to push this tower. Last game, I said 22, 22 minute tier 3 tower was a very, very risky move to do because you're always so weak. And um, Yamata, he's even going to tank the tower for a little bit before the TP actually comes as Clockwork Goblin. So even then, I think you'll still be happy to stick around. Level 13, Morphling. Fury and Falling back now. Urn completed on top of him. Vengeful Spirit running around with a couple more of those smoke, smoke of Deceits. Shen's got his army ready to actually uh, advance on that bottom lane. HY, HY is already down there. Completed BKB on top of him. Illusion Rune sitting in his, sitting in his bottle currently. 700 gold. A3O is there in the middle lane too. Void Stone, more than likely, won't, won't have enough farm to actually complete into a Gwyn suit, so might actually go shortcoming to go Yules. Bat right with that Blink Dagger. So important right now for LGD that he really hits those lassoes and pulls them right out of position. It's the only way they're going to get on top of uh, Scythe in these big battles right now. They're already behind, they've got to shut down that Morphling nice and fast. 
But even then, he's really hard to shut down too, because the second he wants to, he can jump to the replicate, and there we go. Look straight in, blink dagger, lasso, and wave straight out again. Lincoln's fear does not actually hold him now. So as far as initiation goes, Morphling would have died if he didn't have that Lincoln's fear. And now he escapes. He did damage on the wave out too. Batrider took that one, and now he farms up the rest of the mid wave. So uh, as far as this is going at the moment, LGD, they're going to have a very, very hard time finding an opening. And it uh, looks like Morphling actually jumps to a replicate as well. Um, TP coming out. Where is it? Coming down towards the bottom lane. We've got a SF down there. That's where Morphling is. So he's actually jumped himself down to switch that map around so I can actually see the things properly. Spin goes up. All of, El all of our Scythe have fallen back right now. Possible Roshan. Possible not. Just basically saying hi, passing the main box. Leave a letter of interest. I'll come and mow your lawn for you, Roshan, if you give me an Aegis and Aegis the Immortal. Two trolls. Just so, like, e even, even Koi, I mean Roy at the moment, is literally just going, you know what? I got two trolls. Engage us if you want. I'm going to shut down two of your heroes. It's literally, it's, it's like having Meepo uh, on your team. You're just going to freaking net everything around your place. And it's like, oh, hang on, I'm not supposed to be winning that one, and uh, now I can't. Oh my god, fail epically. SF still moving himself around, getting a little bit of farm. Puck enjoying, his, enjoying the spree as well. Puck with that blink dagger on top of him now too. So as far as initiation goes, it's tit for tat, mister. Tit for tat. Chen has that um, mech, mech actually finished up as well. Morphling still free farming the top. Eaglehorn is now farmed up onto a Morphling at 22. So we go Scepter away in a bit. Uh, for that uh, Ethereal Blade. At which point, nowhere on the map is safe. How are we actually going for wards right now? We've got sentry wards out from Scythe. Scythe. Scythe and Sharky. <laughs> Sorry, Sharky and uh, LGD. Literally smack bang on top of each other for ward placement. Top lane, using that smoke and deceit, trying to catch out that Morphling. A little bit too late because they're uh, right in front of the Roshan pit. <laughs> he goes down, Morphling takes the Aegis. Everyone gets 200 gold. Not sure you got the last hit as well, but... Uh, that's definitely going to help along the way. It's going to be a big, big push out from Morphling, and uh, if he does complete that uh, Ethereal Blade, then uh, that's a guaranteed two kills. Back of the Aegis of the Immortal, that's a guaranteed two. Massive denies coming out too. Looks like LGD having a bit of a scout around. Want to actually see if they can pick off uh, one of the Scythe boys uh, inside their own neutrals. Not going to happen. HYHY pushing out the mid. He's got support there by Puck and CM. Koi, lagging, don't you lag out. It's going to save the game the second this actually happens. There's nothing at the moment though that would actually like, between the last save and now, there's nothing which you'd go, oh my god, this is critical. Very, very dangerous times. Koi, just watch that counter. Watch that counter going down. Let's see who actually votes as well. Entire LGT, LGD team wants to remove him. And there goes 8 3 0. Al actually can't load from it as well, so uh, they need to actually get everything there. So we're all going all gonna to quit out now. A3 is lagged out, so uh, we will actually take it up from the last save, which I think was maybe three minutes ago. Maybe four. But we'll be coming back. In fact, at this point, we'll actually split the VOD into two, by the way, guys. So, um, yeah, as far as like map, part two of this one, stick around. I'm going to actually separate it up because we are going to be changing, we are going to be changing, changing hosts, uh, which means it will actually take a couple of bits. So uh, we'll be back in just a moment.